Hello, it's me once again on another video, and sadly today we've come to the end of the Uriah Heap discography review series because I'm looking at album number 24, and that would be Living the Dream. Released September 14th, 2018. Its length is 52 minutes, 28 seconds. Its genre is hard rock, heavy metal, prog. Its members are Mick Box on guitars, Bernie Shaw on vocals, Phil Lanzan on keyboards, Davey Rimmer on bass, and Russell Gilbrook on drums. Now, coming off of the previous three albums, starting with Wake the Sleeper, it seemed to really reignite Uriah Heep's career, where previously they were kind of middle of the road trying to find themselves and just trying to find, I, I just think, rediscover that sound that they had been lacking for so many years. And I think after Wake the Sleeper was a success for the band, that they actually went to really pursue that sound and kind of do what they want. And from Into the Wild and Outsider, where it seemed kind of they were melding those 70s and 80s sound into a more modern feel, on this album is the fruit of that labor, because to me, it is a great mixture of both. And it starts off with the song Grazed by Heaven. I re did a reaction when the song first dropped as the single for the album and was pleasantly surprised as soon as I heard it. It's a very heavy prog sounding. Some of Bernie's best vocals in Uriah Heep are on this, not only on this song, I think on this album, a lot of Bernie's best stuff is on this album. I love the background singing of it. It's a very catchy chorus. Uh, I like the breakdown and the vocals into the solo, and then a little keyboard solo, and then another guitar solo. Just great stuff. It's very heavy. It's very prog. It, it's I always find Uriah Heep is at their absolute best when they are at their heaviest. Look at album like Look at Yourself. That thing was heavy, as heavy could be, and it was a great record. And this one, to me... I'll go out and say it. This is their heaviest album since Look at Yourself. You don't really have a lot of that soft stuff on it. On to song number two, Living the Dream. I love the opening. It's very foot-tapping, head-banging song. Love the vocals. It's one thing I love about this. It's not oversung by Bernie. It's great. Like, it just feels right. The drums have a beautiful people feel to it. Uh... Solo starts off soaring and then goes into just this intensity that you don't necessarily hear very often, but when Mick does it, it's really good. I love the keyboard solo. Love the organ piece at the end of the song. On to song number three, Take My Soul Away. Very heavy intro. Just great guitar work on the song. It's something that I noticed throughout this album, especially over the last couple albums, two or three albums, some of Mick's best work in years, probably since the 70s, which feels good. I love the solo at the end. On to song number four, Knocking at My Door. The vocals are great. I love the tempo and the guitar work. And uh, it's a short solo. It's nothing too long. That's one thing is sometimes when you do a short solo, it isn't a terrible idea. And it seemed to really work here. Uh, Rock and the Road, I love the intro, has a very early Heap-esque sound to it. Which is great whenever you get those early kind of heap doomy feelings intros. Uh, I love the tempo change. It kind of gives me that feeling of early look at yourself feel to it. Great bass lines. The bass on this album is back. It's booming. And it just sounds great. Uh, feels like a bunch of songs in one. Which, if you listen to it, like you can distinctly hear like three different parts to it. And it's something you would hear kind of in Early Heap, where it would sound kind of like they were multiple songs added into one. That's kind of what Salisbury was. But on this one, it's just so damn good. And once again, just another face-melting-like solo by Mick Box, where it's like, man, this is good. On to song number six, Water's Flowing. Has a heavy ballad feel to it. I love the chord solo, how it's not just a normal guitar solo with just notes here and there. It's actual chords, which I quite enjoyed. 
And I like a lot of the soft touches on this album where it's not over-the-top heavy. It kind of brings it down a bit, so it gives the song a little bit of breath to breathe. On to song number seven, It's All Been Said, organ intro. Love the organ parts. That's one thing that Uriah Heep keeps to, that they, they do, I think, better than anybody else, is the organ. Uh, into a soft piano vocals, it builds very nicely, feels very organic, and I love the fact it is organ-driven. That's one of my guilty pleasures, and I love the solo. On to song number eight, Goodbye to Innocence, soaring guitar intro, nice bass and drum sections. Russell Gilbrook, to me, is Uriah Heep's best drummer. I know it's probably a very unpopular opinion. To me, Russell Gilbrook's probably the best drummer Uriah Heep's ever had, and that's saying something, because I know Lee Kerslake was in the band for a long, long time. But by the end of Lee Kerslake, I always felt like they just needed a shot in the arm, and I think once Russell joined the band, it was the shot in the arm they needed. And uh, just catchy chorus. Solo sounds good, and I like the outro to the song. On to song number nine, Falling Under Your Spell. Once again, a soaring intro, and I love how it builds. Has one of that, has a feeling of mid 70s heap to that era, I want to say, from Wonder World, Return to Fantasy, High and Mighty, even adding stuff such as the uh, Firefly and a little bit of Innocent Victim. Just has that sound to it that feels very mid 70s heap. On to song number 10, Dreams of Yesteryear. I love how the opening led to a soaring guitar, to a dream sequence. It's very subdued, laid back, and very, very melodic. Now, what are some of the highlights of this album? I love the fact it feels like different eras of heap modernized, which is something that not very many bands can do or do well, is take stuff they did from a long time ago, update kind of that sound, meld it to what today is, and make it work. But I really feel like Uriah Heep took the 70s, the 80s, and parts of the 90s, and just modernized it into Heep, to what Heep is now. And it just sounds fantastic. Uh, to me, it's some of, I dare say, Mick Box's best guitar work in Uriah Heep is on this album. I think he's reinvigorated in this band, and it just sounds great. Like, I know listening to Into the Wild, Outsider in this, Outsider kind of was a step down, but I feel like Into the Wild and Living the Dream has Mick Box, some of his best damn guitar work in Uriah Heep, bar none. I've always said one thing is it's a shame that after Ken Hensley left, they never brought in another guitar player to play with Mick because I think it would have helped them through a lot of the 80s and parts of the 90s. But hey, it is what it is. Other stuff I like on it, it's some of Bernie Shaw's best vocals for me and Uriah Heep. Bar none. Like, this is my favorite Bernie Shaw album that he sung on. It's not just uh, recency biased or anything. Like, listening through his entire career in Uriah Heep, this is the best start to finish Bernie Shaw album. This, to me, you can put up against any other singer in Heap. This is what makes Bernie Shaw, to me, other than David Byron, Bernie Shaw is the voice of Uriah Heap. And I, I actually think he might have even surpassed David Byron. Uh, other things I like, I love the bass on this album. It sounds good. The drumming, the just the energy of it is good. Uh, Lowlights of the album? This is... I didn't want to tend. This is... If this is the last Uriah Heap album they ever do, this is a monster album to go out on. I'm smiling. I just love this record so much. I remember getting it for Christmas after it came out. This is, to me, up there with Look at Yourself... Demons and Wizards, Magician's Birthday, Sweet Freedom, Salisbury, Innocent Victim, 
any great Uriah Heap record, this is up there. This is, in my opinion, this is in my top five Uriah Heap albums of all time. And that's going to be probably my next list. If I had to give it a grade out of five, it'd probably be five out of five for me. This is a perfect record. This is one of Uriah Heap's best records. This is their best record in years. Hands down. I know I was really high on Wake the Sleeper. This surpassed it. It's fantastic. Like, I just can't get over how good this record is. Now, for my next few videos, I'm it's going to be very Uriah Heap heavy because I finished the series, so there is a few Uriah Heap videos I want to do. And one of them is going to be a really long-ass video. I'm going to rank the Uriah Heap albums from worst to best. Wish me luck. It's, it was really a nice long two years just about to do this. But anyway... I'm glad for everyone that's watched it. Once again, be sure to like, comment, favorite, subscribe. I wish I could have done this earlier, but this is Amir signing out. Peace.